Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, your home for your favorite hockey team in the Bay Area. Sharks lose in overtime, or in a shootout, sorry, to the Blackhawks. Uh, Bordalo debuts with a Barracuda, and the Sharks have a new, signed a new face, the a former MVP of the SHL. Uh, all that, and of course, three Fries of the Week on today's Locked on Sharks. Siri, play Seek and Destroy. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm J.D. Young of Locked On Sharks. Kyle is off uh, arguing whether the toilet spins clockwise or counterclockwise in Australia. So just me tonight. Uh, so yeah, we're tonight going to look at kind of the big takeaways from the, the Blackhawks game. Of course, have to discuss Bordalo in his three-point night, his, his debut with the Barracuda. And they're going to get to know the newest shark that they they signed today in um going to have my three fries of the week and no fries for Kyle. So let's start out with the the Blackhawks game. So um, kind of the first big takeaway was, you know, the it, it feels like whenever the Sharks get good defense or good goaltending, and not to say that Reimer was bad today, but like good defense, they can't get good scoring. And then whenever they do get good scoring, they can't, play the complimentary hockey with it so you know the sharks were able to score four goals tonight they got it was nice to see actual secondary scoring rudy scored you know megna scored like uh scott reedy scored guys who don't normally kind of i mean i guess rudy rudy's got nine goals this year but like kind of not you know and of course timo scored which which is expected but like you know you got complimentary scoring from guys and secondary scoring and depth scoring tonight but the Sharks just did a really bad job at, at playing defense. I mean, you know, Patrick Kane is very, very good at hockey, and Debrinkit is very, very good at hockey. But, like, you know, they just they couldn't keep the Blackhawks from getting really high-quality shots. So um, kind of my point at that, the in all situations tonight, the Blackhawks had 17 high-danger chances compared to the Sharks' 10 um you know and that was pretty well spread out where like in the the first period they had five the second period they where the blackhawks really kind of took it to the sharks they had six and they the blackhawks had five more in the the third period and they had one in overtime but compared to the sharks 10 where they had three two five and then zero in overtime and it's just you know that's if really tough to you know to no matter how well your goalie plays, and I thought Reimer played really well tonight, and he he made some ridiculous saves. But again, if you're just letting the the def, the there's a defender, if you're just letting you know the the Blackhawks just get insane shots, like if you look at the heat map from tonight, it's just glowing red right outside of the net um, for the Blackhawks. So you know, just making life really hard on James Reimer. So Reimer. You know, he, like I said, he played pretty well tonight. Um, you know, 13 high danger shots against uh, nine high danger saves uh, in the 65 minutes, um, four high danger goals, six mid danger shots, and then 12 low danger shots. And he, he saved all those shots. But again, you're just making life tough on your goalies. And when, you know, when you're just letting the, you know, the, the opposing team kind of just come in and do whatever they want. So um, I think my other big takeaway was was Sasha Shimolevsky. So with the Lions tonight, we saw Nick Benino actually on Couture's wing. So it was Hurdle, uh, Barabanov, Meyer. Um, the second line was uh, Couture, uh, Balsers, and then uh, Benino. And then we have Shimolevsky, who was the three C. I think this is a little bit of an audition show for Shimolevsky, who's played center um, a lot. He kind of bounced. He's been bouncing around, you know. Um, I think about last year he bounced around a little bit. 
Um, and then he's kind of in the Barracuda this year. He played a little bit of uh, wing, but he's been playing a little bit more center. And I think this might be an audition for him to go into next year to maybe try to win that three C or that four C going, um, you know, cause there's going to be real competition with that. If you look at um, Bordolo, Scott Reedy, Weatherby, Benino, like all these guys are going to be competing for these bottom six um, for line three, line four C. And, you know, I think they wanted to see how he did tonight. And um, so if we look at their, that line, I know the lines were a little weird tonight, especially when they went 11 forwards and seven defensemen. And then of course, um our of course uh Shimmick gets hurt and doesn't return to the game but the nieto uh Shimileski gregor line uh not a, a super great night so five on five they played 628 together they had two shot attempts and they gave up seven shot attempts so um not what you want to see from them um especially you know where bob bugner if bob bugner's back next year where he uses that third line as a kind of shutdown role so not not the greatest of debuts tonight uh for for Shimoleski in that situation but you know I think you got it like especially now that the Sharks are actually officially officially eliminated you got to just kind of let them do their thing so you know Shimoleski he played played against um, you know, Calvin DeHaan, Setcha, like you kind of played against, you know, whatever guy, but like, you know, just a little, little bit of a tough night for, for him. Um, at least in that role. Um, I think you still, you still got to give him more of a chance. So, um, and then kind of my final takeaway is, um, you know, it, it's just, it's tough seeing guys like Dolan and Merkley who you're expecting to be part of your future just not even given a chance tonight and we don't know if if merkley is maybe dealing with some issues from um from that hit from saturday night i'm just speculating here um you never know like sometimes with uh, concussions and stuff like that um they, they take a little bit to appear again this is pure speculation but you just wonder if maybe he's dealing with a little bit of that tonight but um tough again to see dalen who's not definitely not had the greatest uh, ending to his season, especially after the way he started. But like when the, the coach would rather just play 11 forwards instead of not putting you out there, it's just, it's a tough look. So I'm hoping he gets back there, there, especially with uh, Shimmick being hurt, you know, as, as a, and the season being officially kind of lost right now, like let him play and try to build some of that confidence back up, you know, especially if he can, stringing together a couple good games at the end of the season, maybe get a goal or a couple of points here to like really kind of, you know, try to go out of the season on, on a high note and kind of build his confidence back up before, as he goes into the summer. So, you know, and I, with, I've talked about Dallin plenty of times where it's just, I wonder if after, you know, he dealt with a shoulder injury, got COVID and then like if puck in the mouth, it just all those things kind of together, just kind of really took him off, off the track. So, yeah, you know, I, I again like to see. I like to, right now. I'm I'm just play all the children. So speaking about children, uh, before we talk about Bordelo's Barracuda debut, uh, let's take a quick break and talk to you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. So Built Bar, you guys know, the world's best tasting protein bar. Every Built Bar is covered in 100% chocolate. They're low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bar with these. They're so much better. Typical candy bar can have anywhere from a two to 300 calories, 30 grams of sugar, dozens of net carbs. Built Bar, they've got you covered where you get the same amazing taste, but only 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They have mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and white chocolate cookies and cream. Or if a bar doesn't kind of float your boat right now, they have these puffs. They are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallow. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat. Again, covered in 100% real chocolate with flavors like yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. They're so good. They're all going to be your new favorite. So go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. The Bordelow. 
hype train is full on here, baby. So Bordalo signs his amateur tryout, plays Wednesday night for the Barracuda as the Barracuda fall. I think it was six to three after an empty net goal to the, the Bakersfield Connor, but we don't care about the score. Okay. All we care about is how Bordalo did. And Bordalo looked like he belonged. Three assists, two of them primary, three shots on goal. His line dry. So he was with uh, Lane Peterson and Hobblewax and just that line. Roy Sommer after the Barracuda coach after the game said that was their, their best line all night and watching the game. It was easily the best line all night. They, they were uh, driving play scoring chances. After, I mean, the first shift of the game, Bordolo takes it. He has a great run down the, uh, the right wing. Shoots it, almost beats the goaltender clean. It bounces. Lane Peterson uh, tucks it home. And then later on in the game, you know, he's showing his good forechecking skills, uh, steals a pass, has a great uh, little mini breakaway, just unable to beat the goaltender. Um, you know, he on the power, he looked good on the power play. He was kind of playing the bumper. You know, again, he hasn't practiced with these guys. He just showed up on on Tuesday afternoon, and he's playing in the, the game on Wednesday. So he's had, what, a morning skate? And then, you know, he's just looked like he belonged. And, you know, we've I know we, we've joked about, like, the hype train and stuff like that, but I don't know how you can't be excited after what Bordolo did in his first Barracuda game. And, you know, I mean, the, the biggest field Condors, they're, they're a solid team. They're not, like, world beaters and – but the Barracuda are bad. You know, they're just like the Sharks right now. They lost a bajillion games in a row. You know, the Staylock has been not great. He's been terrible at go- as a goaltender, you know, and like they have the same issues where they just, they can't dry. They can't create shots. They give up a bajillion shots per game and stuff. But like Bordolo just looks so good and so smooth and so comfortable out there. And, you know, it's, I don't want to, go too crazy off oh, one game but it's it's just very nice to see especially with you know a lot of people you know especially after his kind of up and down season at michigan and you know he'll be the first to admit it wasn't it wasn't the season that he'd hoped to have um but you know just to kind of come here and you know be the best guy on the ice especially with you know there's players a lot who played a lot more than him and a lot a lot older than him and a lot more experienced but just that natural talent and you know as sometimes just being the most talented guy on the ice is, is all that matters and it was it was nice to kind of get that confirmation of like yeah he he can be this guy that we were expecting him to be and you know hopefully kind of you know elevate to that eventually elevate to that 2c role you know where kind of as Couture starts to kind of continue his, the end of his career where Bordolo can hopefully slide into that role and be that two C guy and let Couture kind of be the three C, you know, eventually in a, in a couple of years. But like, it was just so nice to just see him kind of come out there and do his thing right away. And he looked like, again, he looked smooth. He was doing, you know, he was playing very well defensively, you know, he was being responsible. And especially for a smaller guy where it's like, he, you know, he's not, he's only five foot nine and, but like he wasn't afraid to mix it up. He was winning puck battles along the board, you know, and like, he just, he used his size. Well, granted, he doesn't want a size, but he used it well. And, and just how, again, I can't get over how smooth he is with the puck and, and just kind of finding that open space and, you know, finding his teammates. And, you know, once he actually gets to practice with these guys and has a, like, a, a training camp and an off season to work with these guys. Like I just, I, I can't believe. Oh, I'm so excited. The border hype train, baby. It is. It's ready. Let's go. So again, I, I still think next year he plays a lot of Barracuda games. Um, but I mean, you got to think right now, you know, he's a potential dark horse to win, you know, to win a job coming out of camp. I mean, between Benito, Weatherby, Scott Reedy, Shimolevsky, you know, Ball, uh, Bordolo, you know, two of those guys are going to be, uh, you know, centers if you assume Hurdle and Couture are one and two. Um, you know, why why not Bordolo if, if he's just the better guy? Um, I know Weatherby and Reedy and, and Shimolevsky have been in the system longer and stuff, but, it, I mean, these guys just aren't, uh, you know, these, these guys are just, 
aren't as talented as Bordalo is. And um, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, bef before we finish this up, uh, we got to take a quick break and talk about our friends over at Bet Online. You guys all know about Bet Online, the number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs. Um, as baseball is getting underway right now. BetOnline is your continuous source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. So head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. So the Sharks uh, did make a, a signing today. Um, they signed actually, so Max uh, Veranu. I'm going to screw up his name for a while. So um, he was actually a um, product of the Ottawa system. <laughs> So, you know, I, I understand, you know, he hasn't, um, it's a little worrisome. So he played Princeton hockey, uh, 2015 to 2019, uh, where he did really, really well during that time. He was, um, actually, uh, 2016, 2017, he was the NCAA Ivy leagues, uh, all Ivy League's second team. Um, 2017 to 2018, he was the second, uh, first NCAA all Ivy team, first team. And then, uh, 2018, 2019, uh, as a senior, he was, uh, Ivy league second team as well, as well. And they, uh, part of the senior class, all Americans first team, um, then, Played for the Sens for a little bit. Couldn't really crack the Sens, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we know how that goes with them. Um, got traded to kind of bounced around, got traded, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, wasn't drafted by the Sens, but he did he did sign with them after his college, after he finished playing at Princeton. Um, couldn't really crack, crack the Sens. And I mean, I'm not going to fault that because the Sens, we know how the Sens development system has been at times. Um, so I'm not going to really kind of follow. So um, play, play a few games with the, I think he's got 12, uh, 12, 16 NHL games. He's got four, two goals, two assists in that time. Um, played in the AHL where he had in 36 games between the centers and the Toronto Marlies, um, five goals, five assists, 10 points. Signs in the SHL in the 2020 uh, to 21 season. And then um, we played with IK Oscarham, uh, 25 goal or 25 games, 12 goals, six assists, 18 points. But this year blew up with the uh, uh, League Sands IF, uh, where he was actually the SHL MVP of the league. So 51 games, 34 goals, 26 assists, and 60 points points um reached out to some of our uh swedish friends so mikhail home kind of uh, his quick thoughts was he's been one of the best goal scorers in the shl i've seen in a while i uh, definitely think he has a role to play in the nhl probably bottom six though but the ability to play on the power play which is good especially because the sharks power play that pp2 has been um yeah at times so and then Patrick Bexel, who um, he's been on the podcast before. He works, uh, does stuff for um, for one of the Habs websites, has his own podcast as well. Uh, he had a very good season, got to play on the power play first line minutes, skilled, low risk, high reward if it works out. And we've seen the Sharks do this before where they, they try to find these gems from, you know, from the European leagues. Um, you know, most famously, um, Don Skoy was one of these guys where, you know, they signed and he worked out pretty well. Um, you know, but the Sharks, you know, you take a swing and a miss on some of these guys because they've had a bunch of other guys who haven't really worked out. So, um, you know, Eric Fowl, who got a nice little list of some of the guys that they, they've done. Um, hold on, I'm pulling that up right now. Um, so he, some of the guys he got uh, was, you know, 
Melker, Marco Carlson was fine. Marcus Sorensen, you know, he was fine. Zumella, who was whatever, but they got we got Barry Van about it. Radil, uh, you guys remember Radil? Lucas Lucas Radil. He didn't really make it. Uh Shimmick, he's been good. Um, you know, I think injuries are re- really slow down Shimmick though. Uh Shellman, who played like 50 games for the Sharks. Bergman didn't really work out. Handemark is meh. Yurkatan. So Again, it's a low risk. I think it's a two-way contract, so we can play in the AHL next year and you know, kind of get used get used to playing American or North American hockey again and stuff like that. And it's just a, you know another depth guy that you can kind of take a swing on. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, then you know you found you may have found some something out of it. So um, again, it, I think it shows that the Sharks aren't happy with their current depth. Uh, right now, especially with the way, I mean, we can see that with the way they just don't have depth scoring. So getting the guy who was literally the MVP in the SHL, um, on a kind of prove it deal where it's, I think it's $750,000. So it's, it's just a minimum contract and he can play in the AHL next year. So it's again, low risk, high reward. If he works out, he works out. If not, he can trade him, send him back to Sweden, whatever. So it doesn't matter. All right. It's Friday. So you know what that means. Three fries of the week. Uh, my third fry of the week. Um, let's go Brandon Co. So prospect who started, who hit a hundred points in the OHL this year, um, which is pretty insane. I think he is sixth. Uh, let me pull it up right now. Um, he is sorry, fifth. Fifth in the OH uh, entire hockey league. So, um, yeah, just been an absolute monster this year. Man, playing among boys, <laughs> six foot five, 203 pounds, just destroying children. So, uh, 34 goals, uh, 67 assists, so 101 points after today's game. So, yeah, Brandon Co. just dominating i can't wait to see him on the barracuda next year when, when this 2020 draft class all kind of comes together so um my second fry of the week uh thomas bordelow he just came in and just was awesome right away i know it's one game i know whatever i don't care he's gonna be really good and i can't wait for him uh to be playing with william Eklund at some point i just uh i can't wait for that so and then my first fry of the week, um, I'm going to give it to Capo Kakinen. Um, played amazing against the Predators. 40 of 41 uh, saves. Just couldn't save it in overtime. Got zero run support from his team. Um, that's why you traded for him. That's why you're hoping for him to be kind of the next the next guy. So, yeah, great yeah, great job by Kakinen on, on Tuesday. And, you know, I hope... You know, I'm sure we'll see him this weekend, especially because the Sharks have a back to back. So um, another good opportunity for him to kind of keep um, building and ending this season really well. And that way give the Sharks, you know, something they, they don't where they won't have to make a decision with him. They'll just, you know, sign him and then have to make a decision with one of the other guys. So, yeah, that's going to do it for us again um, this weekend. Um, we will I will be giving away. Well, thanks to Liz um, two free tickets to the April 23rd Sharks Blackhawks game in section 121. All you have to do Saturday night, you're not doing anything anyway. Come after the game. I'm going to do a live stream on YouTube. We're going to hang out. We're going to talk about the Sharks game and I will be giving away two free tickets there. So just come hang out with me Saturday night. Make sure you subscribe. Um, you can follow the show. Locked on Sharks on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, you can also listen to us wherever you get podcasts, of course. Um, Apple, YouTube, Spotify, um, Odyssey, all those fun things. Um, of course, YouTube, subscribe. We are marching our way towards 1,000. That is the goal. We want to try to get to 1,000 subscribers by the draft. Um, as you guys, if you're a long-time listener, know. Uh, the draft is where we really shine. Um, we're going to be cranking out more draft profiles, especially now the season's starting to wind down. Um, we had a one this week with, with Scouch on uh, Gleb. Um, so we're going to be definitely crank, you know, kind of turning those up. We're going to, um, as the season kind of, as the season ends, 
you guys know the content boys put out the best content during the off season. We'll be diving in how the prospects did kind of looking at some sliding doors moments of the sharks, you know, getting you guys ready for the draft, getting you guys ready for free agency. So make sure you subscribe. We really want to try to hit a thousand subscribers by the time the draft rolls around. So um, you can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. You can follow my co-host Kyle, uh, but make sure you follow me first though. Um, he's at Kyle Demetrius. And again, Saturday night after the Sharks game, I'm giving away two free tickets and a free year of San Jose Hockey Now subscription. So um, I will see you guys on Saturday. Um, We'll be back on Monday with a breakdown of what happened this weekend. And I think I have Shang lined up for uh, Tuesday as well. So um, and then go check out the Lockdown Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Go check out um, the Lockdown NHL Now where you can kind of get a nice little taste of what happened uh, the night before. And yeah, go check out, uh, let's see, go check out Locked on Jazz. Bye, friends.